History of the Scottish Kilt The kilt is a knee-length skirt, for men and boys that originated in the Scottish Highlands. Scots have been wearing the kilt since the 16th century. The kilt was first worn in the 16th century, although it was referred to as the Great Kilt, or Philomister in Scottish Gaelic, pronounced Fale more. The top half of the Great Kilt, was worn over the shoulders, and dropped right down to the knees. Whatever the weather, these magnificent clothing kept clans warm, in the freezing highlands. Plants, lichens, fruits, and roots were used to make the wools and dyes, which were collected locally. The same group might have comparable color kilts, based on where they resided, with some variants depending on the year's seasons, and natural resources available. Because Scotland is so far north of the equator, you'd think the kilt would be welcomed, but that wasn't always the case. Clan Macdonald and Clan Fraser, fought in the Great Glen, on Loch Lochy's northern edge in 1544. The Battle of the Shirts, is how this battle is known. That's because they took their kilts off, right down to their shirts, because they were so hot under them. Only 13 of the 900 battlers survived, providing an eye-opening peek, into the brutality of these clan fights. Clan Fraser was victorious, and took Castle Chiram as a prize. This castle's remnants, can still be seen today. You might be shocked to learn, that the idea for today's shorter length kilt, did not originate in Scotland. In the 1720s, an English Quaker named Thomas Rawlinson, from Lancashire, came up with the concept. The great kilt was too much for Rawlinson, so he chose to separate it, and make a single piece, that ran from the waist to the middle knee. The little kilt, known in Gaelic as Philabeg, pronounced Philabeg, was born. Rowlandson and some of his peers, began wearing the little kilt. It was quickly adopted by the Highlanders, as well as some Lowlanders. The Dress Act, 1746, was passed in the 18th century, and went into effect on August 1, 1746. The act made wearing the Highland attire, which featured the kilt, illegal. The restriction was enacted, to bring Scottish clans under government control. The army is the only exception to the rule. The law was not overturned until July 1, 1782, as Scots kissed their kilts goodbye. The proclamation was issued, in both English and Gaelic and read as follows. Listen, men. This is bringing before all the sons of the Gael, the King and Parliament of Britain, have forever abolished the Act against the Highland Dress, which came down to the clans, from the beginning of the world to the year 1746. This must bring great joy to every Highland heart. You are no longer bound down, to the unmanly dress of the Lowlander. This is declaring to every man, young and old, simple and gentle, that they may after this put on and wear the truies, the little kilt, the coat, and the striped hose, as also the belted plaid, without fear of the law of the realm, or the spite of the enemies. The kilt was no longer widely worn at the period. Thankfully, some organizations began to promote, the widespread adoption of historic Highland attire. The kilt slowly but steadily, made a comeback. It's fascinating to consider, that the kilt was almost completely lost to history. The Scottish kilt is bold, distinct, and unlike anything else. The garment normally wraps around the lower body, starting at the left hip, and going around the front, and back to the opposite side where it is tied. From the hip to the middle of the knee, the kilt is worn. For those who are curious, the true Scotsman will be wearing nothing below. Although the Scottish Tartan's authority, believes that wearing nothing below, can be inappropriate in some cases. A good time to wear something under your kilt, is during sports activities. Andy Murray, the tennis player, admitted to wearing underpants under his shirt. Surprisingly, according to YouGov, about 55% of people who wear kilts, do it with underwear underneath. Moving on, the modern kilt is constructed of worsted wool, knitted in a twill weave. Tartan is a particular pattern, created by the way it is weaved. 
Historically, different clans and families were connected with different patterns. Specific patterns were not consistently recorded and defined until the Victorian era. The kilt's design does not begin and finish with the garment itself. It is customary to wear woolen socks that are turned down at the knee. Not to mention the sporran, which is Gaelic, for pocketbook or pouch. The sporran is worn around the waist and is held in place by a chain or leather strap. A belt, jacket, kilt pin, brogue shoes, and a white ghillie shirt, a modern informal edition, can all be utilized to adorn the kilt. Kilts are still extensively worn in Scotland today, and may even be seen in towns like Edinburgh. They are still Scotland's national costume. We now have modern kilts, and utility kilts, which are contemporary kilts. Kilts made of a variety of textiles, including leather, denim, and cotton, have become more popular in recent years. Modern kilts have been seen on celebrities such as, Vin Diesel, Ashton Kutcher, and many more. The kilt has even made its way to the runway, thanks to notable fashion designers like As, Molly Goddard, Virgil Abloh's Louis Vuitton collaboration, and Vivian Westwood. This has resulted in a popular trend of ordinary people like you and me, wearing them outside of Scotland. Many schools have accepted the use of the kilt for girls, because of Canada's significant Scottish ancestry. You might be surprised to learn, that some people in Nova Scotia wear kilts every day. The popularity of the kilt, spread throughout Scotland, starting in the Highlands and ending in the Lowlands. Adaptations are being worn all around the world. And to think, the kilt was almost completely forgotten, in the 18th century. The kilt is here to stay, 